This is the third video in our short series on configuring the Patch My PC update catalog. In this video, we're going to talk about publishing updates. I'm going to publish the latest 7-zip updates and the latest Google Chrome update in this video demonstration. So I'll select those three updates and then I'll choose publish. In my case, I'm going to publish it with full content. This will allow me to download the update and deploy it within SCCM. If you would like more information on the different publication types, you can read the wizard or you can review the TechNet article that we include in our PDF guide. And then I'm going to choose next here to publish it. This is going to go out and download the update files from the vendor's website in most cases. Now if an update isn't signed, for example 7-zip, they don't sign their installer files, you may be prompted to uh, approve the update. In the case that the update's not signed, you're going to have to always approve it. You're not going to be able to always accept that, that update. So there's the second 7-zip uh, 32-bit, so we'll accept that one as well. Now we're going to go ahead and download Google Chrome. Now Google Chrome does sign their update installer files. So in this case, I can choose always accept for the code signing certificate they use. In this case, any future Google update that's signed with the same certificate that this one was signed with, we won't get prompted for this anymore to accept it. Now if you're ever having issues, you can troubleshoot this by going to your temp directory. And there's a log file called scup.log. This will show you the process of what's going on in scup where it's downloading and deploying updates. Okay, so those three updates were published. You can also group updates together. So if you wanted to organize the updates you're publishing, for example, I'll select a few of these updates here you can assign them to what's called a publication group. So I'll just call this sample updates. And in this case, if we went to your publications node, you could see the grouping that you made, and then you could publish updates within a logical group if you would prefer to do it that way, instead of publishing them directly one by one here in the console and selecting them from this node. The next thing that we want to do is actually get these updates showing up within SCCM. So right now I publish the updates and what I'm going to have to do next is force this synchronization to happen. So I'll go ahead and just manually initiate that. Okay so I waited a few seconds and it only took a, a small time for this to finish synchronizing in my lab because I'm not synchronizing any products right now. So you can review the wsyncmanager.log if you wanted to review the sync process and just wait for it to say the sync time and that it was completed. At this point, if you go to your software updates and refresh it, you won't actually see any updates in there quite yet. The reason for that is because we have to actually approve the updates in our software update point configuration. So we can just go to configure site components and then software update point. What we have to do is check the products that we published. So before we actually see the updates show up, we have to go in and check the different publishers and the vendors that we published using SCUP. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and initiate another synchronization. The synchronization has completed. We can see in WSync Manager, we can also see the individual updates synchronizing in as well. So if you go back to your console and refresh it, we should see our third party updates syncing in. And these, at this point, could be deployed just like any other Windows updates. The next one, we'll quickly show you how you can publish a update using the metadata only option. So for example, let's say you weren't sure about Acrobat. Since these updates are pretty large in size, you don't want to go and download updates if you may not need them. In this case, 
we could choose the option to publish it using automatic or metadata only. In the case of automatic, it's going to publish it with metadata only the first time because we're not going to have any compliance results back from our machines in our SECM environment. So it's always going to go metadata only for the first publish. The second time you publish it, assuming that you allowed your clients to scan against it a couple days, if a, if a client needs that update, we'll automatically download that and publish with full content so you could then deploy it in your site. So now that I've published this, I'm going to go ahead and force the synchronization. And we can see the synchronization is now complete. So since Adobe hasn't been published yet, we will have to go in and we're going to have to approve that product. So I'll go ahead and choose Adobe and approve that. So then we'll just go back in here and we'll synchronize one more time. So now we can see the updates got uh, synchronized completed. The difference we can see in the Adobe updates is they're showing up as blue icons. That means that they're only metadata, so you wouldn't actually be able to download and deploy these using SCCM unless they were republished using full content, or if you've republished them using automatic, and if an update was required over here, then it could then publish it with full content depending on how your settings are configured in SCUP or your Config Manager server. This is where you have the threshold for automatic. So if you leave the default settings, it's going to say if one machine needs the update, then it's going to go ahead and publish it with full content the next time you publish it with the automatic type. And you can even set a threshold here. If you leave the threshold at zero, that means it will always download the update as long as the client count requirement is met. And that will cover the videos on publishing the updates. Now at this point, for any of the updates that are published with full content and showing up green, you could then download them into a deployment package and then deploy them in a software update group just like you would for normal Windows updates. And you can use the same process for that.